forgiven for thinking there are really several reasons for having these portable fire extinguishers around the workplace. But this is more than bad practice. In fact, it could be against the law. And whilst they may seem like the world's most convenient doorstops, the real reason why we have extinguishers is a lot more serious. Extinguishers are there to cover the possibility of fire. And the fact is, in an emergency, one of these could easily make the difference between having a minor incident on your hands or a major disaster. Using it correctly could prevent injury, save your premises, your job, and even your life. So, first things first. Get to recognize all extinguishers, treat them with respect, and learn how to use them. Most importantly, make sure you know the evacuation procedure where you work. I'm going to show you all the basic do's and don'ts about the fire extinguishers you have at work. That includes the different types you may have, as well as the right and wrong ways to use them in an emergency. All in all, there's never been a better time to really brush up on your knowledge, because the latest European manufacturing standards mean that the appearance of your extinguishers will be changing. The first important point to remember is that all fire extinguishers are designed with just one genuine purpose in mind. Not as an alternative to the fire brigade, but as the best first aid you can have against a small fire. In other words, the kind of minor incident you may get around the workplace. And whilst these sorts of incidents may not be particularly serious at first, without the benefits of clear thinking and prompt action with the correct type of extinguisher, they could quickly turn into a much bigger problem. But what is the right sort of extinguisher? After all, surely one fire is just like another. Well, unfortunately not. Although all fires may look more or less the same, there's a very real difference in the way they occur, the way they spread, and the way in which they must be fought. Using a method that's right for one sort of fire may be ineffective for another. In fact, it may even make matters far, far worse. So as you can see, it's vital that you can recognize the different sorts of fire and know the best weapons to fight them with. Unlikely though it is, you can never predict where or when you might have a fire emergency on your hands. Therefore, it's essential to know the correct extinguisher for the job. Ideally, you should get this sort of knowledge through attending a practical training program under professional guidance, but of course, this isn't always possible. Even so, there are still a lot of essential facts that everyone can learn, starting with fire itself. Fire, every fire, is the result of a three-way chemical process. It occurs when fuel and oxygen are brought together with enough heat to cause ignition. Oxygen is normally present in the air in sufficient quantities to support a fire, for without it, a fire cannot survive. Heat can be applied in any number of ways. It may be deliberate or accidental. But once a fire has started, it will usually continue because it then has its own heat supply. Fuel may be any combustible substance, a solid, a liquid, or a gas. But whatever the fuel involved, it's the ignition of the vapors which actually produces a fire. Some solids would need quite a lot of heat to raise them to a high enough temperature to combust, but materials like paper, which are thin, ignite very easily. Once alight, heat produces more vapors, which will burn to produce more heat, spreading the fire further. Some liquids are potentially dangerous because they give off vapor all the time, whilst gases are already vapors and ignite instantly. So the basic principle is this. To extinguish any fire, remove either the heat, fuel, or oxygen, and it simply cannot survive. Simply put, different sorts of extinguishers tackle the fire triangle in different ways. These water-based extinguishers work by removing the heat, or in other words, by cooling. 
These foam extinguishers cool the fire too, but also seal off the vapour supply and cut off the oxygen. Carbon dioxide extinguishers reduce the amount of oxygen in the air, whilst powder extinguishers work by way of a chemical reaction. All have their own strengths and advantages, and knowing which to choose and how they should be used in a fire emergency has never been so important. Because under the European standards we mentioned earlier, the old colour coding system has been phased out and you could be faced with choosing between two completely different extinguishers which, because of their design, could look very similar. An area of colour coding has also been retained in many cases, but you could also find that some extinguishers actually look quite different but are in fact exactly the same. The important point to remember is that whether your extinguishers look like this or like this, when it comes to making your selection, you should take your cue from the information they carry and the type of fire you're faced with. Within the home and workplace, fires fall into four basic categories. There's the Class A fire, the sort of thing that can happen when freely burning materials such as wood, paper, carpets or fabric catch fire. These can be tackled quite simply with a standard water jet extinguisher. All you have to do is apply a steady stream of water at the base of the fire, holding the nozzle with one hand and working from side to side. This will cool the fuel material and cause the fire to go out. Make sure you damp down the area surrounding the fire to stop it spreading further. Alternatively, you may also have one of these newer, lighter, water with additive spray extinguishers where you work. You'll notice that these extinguishers are not only lighter and easier to use, but also the spray of water gives a broader spread than a jet, just like a shotgun effect against the fire. So that's water-based extinguishers, ideal for fighting a Class A fire. As you may have guessed, the next class of fire is Class B. These fires involve flammable liquids and demand a different approach. As you can see, just adding a cup of water to a flammable liquid fire has a truly devastating effect. So for flammable liquid fires, that's the Class B fires caused by petrol, oils, fats or greases. These foam extinguishers are the best option. Foam works by floating in on the surface of the fuel, cooling it and cutting off the oxygen in the process. When using a foam extinguisher, you should always move in as close as you can without putting yourself at risk. On contained fires, work from the back edge of the fire, allowing the foam to spread gently over the surface. Spill fires should be fought by applying the foam from the front edge, then working across the fire until it's extinguished. Foam and foam spray extinguishers are versatile weapons in the fight against fire because they have an all-round effectiveness, which makes them suitable for Class A as well as Class B fires. Remember, too, that if you accidentally spill fuel, you can use a foam extinguisher as a wise precaution against it catching fire. For Class B fires over larger areas, spillage fires, and in places where there are multiple fire risks, these powder extinguishers are the best answer. As you can see, powder extinguishers knock out a fire very quickly. They can be used at a greater distance than other extinguishers and have a terrific density of spread, which rapidly smothers a fire. To use a powder extinguisher, cover the fire in a steady sequence, driving out the flames area by area until the fire is definitely extinguished, as reignition could occur. Powder extinguishers are also the best weapon against the third type of fire, the flammable gas or Class C fire. Because it's potentially explosive, a fire which involves flammable gas is definitely only a job for the experts. Always your first move should be to turn off the gas. That way you simply remove the fuel supply and the fire can't survive. If this isn't possible, leave well alone and evacuate the area. Electrical installations bring dangers all of their own. For once a fire gains a hold here, it can travel quickly through a wiring system and spread throughout the building. 
Ideally, your first move should be to locate and turn off the power source. On no account should you use a water or a water-based extinguisher such as these on a fire which involves electricity. So instead, reach for your nearest carbon dioxide extinguisher. Don't forget, they're high-powered extinguishers. They pack quite a punch, and the noise may surprise you. So hold it securely with both hands and aim a stream of gas against the source of the fire, moving side to side across the whole area until the fire is out. Remember, too, keep your hands clear of the horn and the bottom of the extinguisher itself, as the gas is very cold and could easily produce a cold burn, just like frostbite. Having satisfied yourself that the fire is out, leave the room and close the door behind you, and wait for the arrival of the fire brigade. You may also still have halon extinguishers, coloured green, where you work. Halon is an ozone-depleting substance and is no longer manufactured. Halon extinguishers are being phased out. However, these may be used on fires involving flammable liquids and gases, and are also suitable for use on live electrical equipment. So that's the different classes of fire, class A, B, C, and fires involving electrical equipment. For each one, there's a specific extinguisher, recognisable by the icons on the body, and this normally applies no matter where you are. As you've seen, many of them are suitable for multi-purpose use, as well as the speciality for which they were first designed. Yours may look slightly different than this one, but in principle, nearly all modern extinguishers operate in a very similar way. All you have to do is follow the clear instructions. Simply remove from the bracket, pull out the safety pin, aim, squeeze the levers, and, well, fire! Always try to remember these important points about using fire extinguishers. Hiya. If possible, have someone with you at all times. Always remember to make it a priority to call the fire brigade and raise the alarm. When you use an extinguisher, keep calm and remember your training. Learn the correct way to use an extinguisher. The right method will buy you results. Extinguishers have plenty of capacity to stop a small fire when used correctly. If you have difficulty with lifting, you can always drag one of the bigger, old-fashioned extinguishers. If in doubt, get out. You may also have a fire blanket where you work. This acts by smothering a fire and is suitable for use against flammable liquid fires or clothing. When using a fire blanket, always remember to protect your face and hands and turn off the heat supply. These hose reels may also be a familiar sight where you work. These are provided for larger premises to protect against Class A fires, such as open plan areas, airport terminals, large department stores or office blocks. So, that's really all there is to it. Remember the alphabet of fire and get to know the icons for Class A, Class B and Class C fires, as well as fires involving electrical risks. Recognise the different types of extinguishers where you work and become familiar with their location. Make sure that you know the correct procedure to follow in the event of an emergency and that you understand how your extinguishers should be used. Moreover, treat them with the respect they deserve. One day, they could save your life.